Hi, everybody. Justin Wingett here from TM Television, your friendly avid reseller in Carrollton, Texas. That's near Dallas. Today, I want to bring you a video talking about what's new in Media Composer. The latest version was just released a couple of days ago, version 893. And just kind of following in the footsteps of the last few releases, this release does offer some pretty neat new features, some of which I'd like to go over with you today. You can find all the information that I'm going to be going over, plus other stuff, uh, in the What's New document, uh, which you'll find at the link below or in the description of the video. Let's go ahead and jump into Media Composer and take a look at some of my favorite from the What's New list. One of my biggest gripes about Media Composer in days gone by was how difficult it seemed to move a clip up or down in the timeline. It seems like a simple thing to do. and you know, it is fairly simple to do it. You just use your segment arrow, grab one of your segments and move it up or down in the timeline. The problem being, obviously, I'm getting out of sync. So the danger is there when you want to do a simple maneuver like that to get it out of sync. Now, I'm going to undo that. We've always had the ability to hold shift and command on a Mac or shift and control on a PC to lock it into uh, time in the timeline when you do that, but that's a lot of work and uses both hands. So. Fortunately, Avid has given us a new way to do that and actually simplifies things quite a bit. So I'm going to jump into my command palette. That's command three or control three on Windows. And in the command palette under the edit tab, you'll notice two new buttons right here, move clip up and move clip down. Those are brand new version uh, 893. And according to the documentation, the default Media Composer keyboard, so I'm going to jump into my Settings tab here in my Project window and go look at the default Media Composer keyboard. By default now, the up and down arrows are the Move Clip Up and Move Clip Down. It is no longer the Previous In Group and Next In Group. However, the Previous In Group and Next In Group buttons are still there. They just happen to be on Shift, Up, and Down arrows. I personally have a custom keyboard that I have zoom in and zoom out on my keyboard is up and down and have move clip up and move clip down on my shift up and down arrows. And so now we can see if I close both of these windows. So now when I click the segment and click my shift up and down arrows, I can move the segment up and down very easily without having to worry about it getting out of sync in time. Nice new feature. All right, moving on. Long-time users may notice a very tiny change in the Composer window. Where did my Fast Menu tool palette go? All they've done is just change the button to look like a button and not a Fast Menu. Same functionality. If I click on my Tool Palette button, my Tool Palette opens. You can play a game of Minesweeper while you're waiting for something to render. But really nothing has changed other than the look of the button. One thing to note is that if we jump back into the Command Palette, we will find that under the other tab right here. So that can be mapped directly to the keyboard. And as always, within the tool palette itself, you can map any button or function uh, into the tool palette using button to button or menu to button reassignment. Back when version 8.9 was released, they included a little audio mixer settings enhancement that allows you to choose a normal expanded mixer view or a new narrow mixer view. Let's take a look. In the audio mixer, if I right click anywhere on the faders, I can choose set display options and change between a narrow mixer or the traditional expanded view of the mixer. Now that was a pretty neat option because it helps you save space, which is always a good thing, especially if you're on a single monitor like I am. With this latest release, they have made a change to the audio setting, which has some nice implications. Let's take a look at the audio setting right now. If I jump up here to my audio default, They've added this Mix Tool Display Options button, which allows you to set a narrow or expanded view and even have default, uh, you know, show the faders or hide the faders, show group link, mirror buttons, things like that, which you can then apply and click OK, and that will change your audio mixer view. But the implication is now that you can duplicate your audio setting and set different mixer views for each audio setting. So let me demonstrate what that means. Currently, I have a workspace view for my normal editing where I like the audio mixer in a narrow view to just, to, just to give me more real estate. But if I jump into my workspace that I use for my audio editing, you'll notice that it changed to an expanded view of the mixer. So that is sort of the benefit of being able to set those settings within the audio setting because now you can map your settings to your workspaces and make those all keyboard shortcuts. And so it just makes it much easier 
to uh, get the view that you're looking for at the time. Now, take note, one thing I learned while making this video is that you cannot change workspace views via the keyboard if you're selected in the audio mixer tool. Notice right now I'm trying to hit uh, Shift 8 and Shift 9 to shift between my workspace views. It's not working, so what I discovered is you do have to be selected in either the timeline or composer window to do that, so now I'm able to switch between them. This next feature is probably the most interesting new feature within Media Composer 893, but also probably one of the most confusing new features I've seen in a while, and you'll see what I mean. What I'm talking about is Dynamic Shuttle. We're all familiar with JKL, right? That gets you forward and back in your timeline at various speeds. What Dynamic Shuttle allows us to do, however, is increase our speed forward or reverse in smaller increments than we could with JKL. Now, to see this in action, first of all, let's talk about where are those buttons and, and how do we use them. So, I'm going to jump into my command palette, and we'll see here under the Play tab that Dynamic Play Forward and Dynamic Play Reverse have been added here. I have mapped those keys to my Shift L and Shift J buttons here on my keyboard, which you can do as well. So now that you know where to find the buttons, how does it work? Well, we need to jump into our timeline settings to really take a look at what's going on here. You'll notice in your timeline settings under the display tab we have these two sliders here that have been added, the dynamic play acceleration and the slow start speed sliders. So these are two parameters that are really kind of not that intuitive uh, on how to adjust them, but hopefully I can explain it to you. So basically Avid has said we want to divide the difference between real-time speed and double speed into 12 steps. So, the dynamic play acceleration slider dictates how many steps we jump with every click of the mouse or keyboard. So if I set this to 12 steps, that means that a single click will get me from real-time speed to double speed, sort of like a normal L would on JKL. If I set this back to one step, that means that it will take 12 mouse clicks to get me up to double speed. It will always start out at real-time speed, regardless of how many steps you set that to. If I set this to 6, that means that it's going to require 2 clicks of the mouse to get me to double speed, since it will take 6 steps for each click. I'm going to set this down to 1, and we'll jump into the timeline and take a look. So I'm going to hit Shift L once, which should get me real time speed. Hit it again, which increases 1 12th of the way to double speed. Hit it again, that's 1 quarter, and so on and so forth. Twelve clicks all the way up to double speed. Okay, so let's jump back into the timeline settings and talk about the slow start speed. This is a little bit different. Avid has divided the difference between slow start, which is a predetermined slow start speed based on the slowest that a jog shuttle could operate, to real-time speed into 16 steps. So this slider actually means not how many steps it's going to jump with each mouse click, but how many steps you want to take to get to real-time speed. In other words, if I set this to 16 steps, that means it will take 16 mouse clicks or button clicks to get to real-time speed from slow start speed. If I set it to one step, that means only one mouse click is required to get me to real-time speed. Let's take a look. I'm going to set this to 16. We're going to click OK. And now slow start speed requires the use of the Option or Alt key, as I call it the Magic Modifier key. So this is what I call the Magic Dynamic Shuttle option. So I'm going to hit Option Shift L, which starts out at slow speed. Hit it again. Again. A little bit faster. Keep on hitting, so it's speeding up. So 16 clicks will get me up to real time speed. So it's a pretty neat new feature, albeit the settings within the timeline settings are a bit confusing on exactly what they do. I would reference the documentation on Avid's website linked below in the description for more information if you've got questions. Going along with our dynamic shuttle or even just regular shuttling with JKL, one really cool new feature that Avid has added is the ability now to do an automatic pitch shift when you're shuttling. 
this is pretty cool. Check it out. If I jump into my audio setting, you'll notice that down here in the corner, we have a pitch correction during shuttle. And currently it is turned off, as you could hear earlier, when the pitch was shifted down as it was slower. I'm going to turn that on, close the audio settings, and now when I hit my Shift L to dynamic shuttle forward, and then again for faster, you'll notice the pitch is not raising. It stays the same. That does not, however, apply to the slow start speed. You'll notice the pitch is still shifted down. So the pitch correction on shuttle is only effective with dynamic shuttle and your regular JKL. Well, that's it for this video, what's new in Media Composer version 893. There are, of course, some other new features that I did not mention in this video, so please check out the documentation and find out more about what's going on in the new version. As always, thank you for your time, and I hope this has been informative and enjoyable. I'm Justin Wingate with TM Television. See you soon. Thank you.